Let's apply L'Hopital's rule to some trig functions. So recall, L'Hopital's rule says, we consider the limit as x goes to c of f over g, where f and g are two nice enough functions. Outcomes in indeterminate form 0 over 0, or plus minus infinity over plus minus infinity. These are the cases where we have to do more work. What L'Hopital's rule says, consider that same limit, x going to c, but with f prime over g prime. If a number comes out of that, or plus minus infinity, then that's what we'll get for an answer to the original limit. So let's take a look. Let's consider first the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of x over x. Okay, we've done this computation before. This is going to give us the slope of the tangent line of sine of x at 0. And we know that that answer is going to be 1. Using L'Hopital's rule, let's take a look. If I put 0 in, we're going to get 0 over 0, taking the limit in the top and the bottom. So L'Hopital's rule says take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and then try 0 again. Derivative of the top is cosine, derivative of the bottom is 1. Put a 0 in, cosine of 0 is 1, so we get 1 over 1, which gives us the 1 that we expect. Okay, so along those lines, let's look at the limit x going to 0, cosine x minus 1 over x. This is going to give me the slope of the tangent line for cosine at x equals 0. So we already know the answer there. The answer will be 0. That's the slope of the tangent line at 0. So we have a horizontal line. So let's take a look. I put 0 in here. Cosine of 0 is 1. So I get 1 minus 1 over 0. So we're looking at a 0 over 0, and L'Hopital's rule applies. I take the derivative. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. Derivative of x is 1. So I wind up getting 0 over 1, which is equal to 0. And that's what we were expecting. Let's push this one a step further. Let's try to limit x goes to 0 of cosine x minus 1 over x squared. Again, we still get our 0 over 0. I take the derivative, top and bottom. We get our minus sine x again, but now we're over 2x. When I put 0 in, we get 0 over 0 again, another indeterminate form. So what we can do is apply L'Hopital again. We can keep applying L'Hopital until a number comes out. Once that number comes out, we're finished. So we try it again. Derivative of the sine is cosine. Derivative of 2x is 2. Put my 0 in, and out comes minus a half. Okay, this will turn up later when we do power series, but for now, it's just a nice application of L'Hopital. For a final one, let's try limit as x goes to 0, sine of 3x over sine of 5x. Put my 0 in, we get sine of 0 over sine of 0, which is 0 over 0, so we need to do more work. Now note, let's do it the traditional way first. The traditional way would be, I want to put sine of 3x over 3x. Why is that? Because the way I take the limit of sine here, if I have sine of box over box, and box is going to 0, then I can just pull out this limit, and then the answer will be 1. So what I want to do is rig this so that I have 3x inside my sign over a 3x in the bottom. Since x is going to 0, 3x is also going to go to 0. So if I can get this in the picture, I can use the old limit to get our new one. For the 5x, it's going to be the same idea. If I can get it over a 5x, then I have sine of box over box. And then I just want to make sure I'm taking the limit to the right place. As x goes to 0, 5x will go to 0 also. Now, if I want to stick a 3x in here, I have to compensate by putting a 3x up top. If I want to put a 5x here, I have to compensate by putting a 5x in the bottom. So you'll notice, when we take the limit, the first term is going to go to 1 since it's sine of box over box. Second term is going to go to 1 because it's sine of box under box. We just flip 1 over and we get 1. And then here the x's can cancel to give me a 3 fifths. And I get my answer of 3 fifths. Since I have the 0 over 0, we can also go to L'Hopital's rule. I take the derivatives, 
derivative of sine of 3x is cosine 3x. Chain rule says put a 3 in front. Derivative of sine of 5x is just cosine 5x. Chain rule says put a 5 in front. And so when I put the 0 in, we have cosine 0, cosine 0 are both 1. And I'm left with the 3 fifths, which agrees with the way I did it traditionally.